Hi everyone, I am doing this video today to finally explain my departure from See The Thing Is podcast as well as the Joe Bunn Network. Um, I sat with this for three months anxiously debating with myself whether I feel comfortable enough to express my reasoning for my departure. I have to read this because um, it's a lot. Uh, after three long months of anxiously debating whether I feel comfortable enough to express my departure from me or from to see the thing as podcast, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't even want to do it again. I just want to get this out over with because like it's it's been a lot of my spirit. Yeah. Um I've had a lot of sleepless nights in the past couple of months. Um, I have constant reminders of what has transpired, so I, I just kind of just have to um, bear with me as I try to get this out. Um, my departure from See The Thing Is podcast, as well as the Joe Bud Network, I am here today to still uncomfortable but find the bravery to finally speak on a very embarrassing situation not only to start my healing process but to help give encouragement to others who have similar stories of sexual harassment in the workplace on january 18th 2021 Joe Budden sat in on a recording of the female-led podcast I was a part of and continuously made sexual suggestive remarks to me that made me extremely uncomfortable as well as fearful of dampening the mood if I didn't laugh along while he made those sexual remarks to me. Um, those moments were not only... <clears throat> excuse me. Those moments... <laughs> not only live on the internet forever, it also forced me in the decision of quitting the podcast. And um, I'm now in a place where it was traumatizing, embarrassing, And I've decided that I have to actually speak up because not only was it important for me to walk away from it, um, it also is important for me to speak up, not only to help heal myself, but also to probably help others in the future and let them know that this probably wouldn't be the best situation for you to enter into working with this person. Um, I'm sorry, I need a moment. Um, within these past three months, I'm going to just be very frank. Within these past three months, after I left, um, I've been feeling stuck. Mentally, emotionally, um, I've even had to have a conversation with my daughter on why it's important for you to speak up when somebody crosses a boundary with you because there is now footage of her mother on the internet with somebody crossing a boundary with her mother and that's on there forever and I want to lead by example and let her know that that is not how somebody should speak to you and that also is a situation where if somebody does cross that line Um, everything that transpired in that episode happened while we were recording. Um, some of it was edited out. Some of it 
did stay in there. And I'm going to reiterate timestamps of how everything transpired. I'm going to go ahead and start from 13 minutes and 48 seconds. Joe calls me out by saying, I've never reached out to him privately or personally. Um, this information is important to this entire scenario because it proves my lack of familiarity with this person. And that is what makes everything that transpired after that so uncomfortable. Um, even though I tried my best to laugh through it, to not, like I said, dampen the mood of the room while we were recording. Um, at 14, 34, 14 minutes, 34 seconds, there's an edit in the recording because Joe says, him and I should speak more because, quote, he's been wanting to fuck me since we've met. Everyone in the studio, including production staff, laughed uncomfortably while one of my co-hosts confirmed that to be true. I am mortified by this revelation, not only because it's revealed while we are amongst the presence of all of the production staff, but it's also being done while we are also recording audio as well as visual. Um, that scene was cut out and it jumps to Joe repeating, we should speak more because we have the least dialogue. Um, at 19 minutes and 26 seconds, Another edit happens because Joe makes another suggestion to having sex with me. Um, this is shown, I'm sorry. Joseph makes another suggestion to have sex with me. That scene is edited out. And what is shown in right after that is me closing my eyes, saying no, and then he says, never mind. Um, at 21 minutes, 30 seconds, uh, Joe tells me to hit a button, bitch, because I didn't hit a sound effect fast enough. At 24 minutes and 54 seconds, Joe makes a comment that I am throwing my singleness in his face. And he thought we were going to be a network power couple. I, and once again, I'm trying to laugh all of this off as it's transpiring. I reply by saying, sorry, Joe, we're not. At 25 minutes and 42 seconds, I make a comment about relationships in general within the conversation. Joe retorts that my shirt that I was wearing isn't buttoned like like I'm single, excuse me, I have to repeat that. My shirt that I'm wearing isn't buttoned like I'm single. I pause, cover my chest with my hand and try to brush it off once again and continue the conversation. Um, at 31 minutes, 42 seconds to about 35 minutes and change, Joe makes me feel like I'm a, in a hostile work environment by letting my co-hosts know that I am carrying the group because they don't dress sexy enough. Um, because now not only am I embarrassed for myself in, in being objectified, but also you're making other women that I have to work with on a regular basis uncomfortable by telling them they don't dress sexy enough. Like I said, this transpired while recording in front of cameras and in front of the entire production staff. So with that, I'm sorry. Um, I 
pretty much react by looking away and looking down in discomfort several times because he has also said this in the past and it actually created a passive aggressive and competitive environment with myself and my former co-host um, where she admittedly attempted to shut down every idea I brought to the table because it wasn't well, well received by Joe and Ian, his business partner. Um, that same former castmate often relayed group chat conversations back to Joe, which I felt, I personally felt was done because she wanted to secure her spot as his favorite because he's made it clear to the entire group that he favorites me. Um, fast forward, we usually take a pause for about 10 to 15 minutes uh, during recording to kind of regroup and get to the next segment. During that uh, break, I leave the studio to go inside of the green room where Joe is sitting there alone. Uh, he asked me if I was okay and I just immediately said, said yes to not even try to further any sort of conversation or uncomfortableness. Um, he then tells me to come, he's gonna come back and sit with us and just give an on-air hug to lighten the mood. I say, okay. Um, fast forward to two hours, 16 minutes and three seconds into the show. Uh, Joe turns, uh, well, Joe returns and he mentions us and just giving our, us our accolades as we've been doing good thus far. Um, this scene is edited once again because, let me rephrase that, go back. Um, he goes down the line to give everyone their accolades. He starts with Mandy, he goes to Bridget, and then once he gets to me, the scene is edited again because he says, Olivia is unique because I wanna fuck Olivia and the fans love her. That scene is edited out. Those words are edited out. But what's left there is me widening my eyes in shock and embarrassment because after he asked if I was okay and he said he would come back to lighten the mood, I didn't think he would once again reference to wanting to have sex with me. Um, at Two hours, 17 minutes, and five seconds in the timestamp, Joe asks if he can give me an on-air hug. My co-host said yes, they insist, and I slowly get up to hug him. Still apprehensive, I give him a hug somewhat of a, of a distance to kind of hug, no pelvis there. Um, it's unbeknownst to me until I actually watch back the episode that he was moving his hips while he was hugging me. Um, I laugh uncomfortably because I'm just, I don't know what else to do at that point. It's, it's nervous laughter at this point. Um, everyone else is like kind of chuckling and I sit back down and at two minutes, 17 seconds and I'm sorry, two minutes, I'm sorry. I'm trying to like just get all of this out because At two hours, 17 minutes and 38 seconds, after I sit down after the on-air hug, I grab the microphone and I say, this is uncomfortable. Um, that's pretty much the end of the episode that was recorded. After the recording, um, Joe was asked while he was still in the room with everyone, um, if he wanted to delete the parts he made where he made passes at me, he said he didn't care. As long as I'm fine with it, then the entire room pretty much looks at me and said, I just say I'm fine with it too. Um, feeling pressured, I say I'm fine. 
um, a few minutes later, I was called back into the studio to see if I wanted to hear the unedited version again and decide if I really want to keep it in there. I listened to it again and um, in my ears, it sounded like everyone was laughing. So who am I to say this needs to be taken out? I don't have much say in this situation. I've already been belittled in this situation by being sexually harassed and objectified. Because just to break from me having these bullet points, at the end of the day, that's what sexual harassment in the workplace especially is. Belittling someone, taking away their dignity in those moments of seeing them less than. So, as much we can say these are jokes, I'm an employee. I didn't have a previous rapport with this person before coming onto this podcast. I didn't have any romantic relations with him, nor did I want to at any given point in time in my life. Um... And many would probably ask, well, if you know the history of Joe Budden, well, why would you sign on to do something like that? Let me tell you right now, if you're going to work and your intention is just to go in and do your job, it should be just that, no matter who's there. If you have no dealings with this person, they even admit having no outside conversations with you up until that point. At no time should anybody feel comfortable enough to say anything of that nature to you. Um, I don't wish anything that happened to me in that moment on anyone because like I said, it was extremely embarrassing. I am mortified that when people search Olivia Dope, the brand that I've spent 10 years at least building, that comes up. I am mortified that after I quit, I had to have a heart-to-heart conversation with the child I gave birth to. I'm sorry, it's not this fast. It's New York. It's New York. I am mortified that I had to have a conversation with the child that I gave birth to because she can find it on the internet. Her friends can find it on the, her teachers can find it on the internet and say, look, that's your mother being belittled and sexually harassed and called a bitch. And I had to explain to her that it's not how someone speaks to you. And told her, if someone does do that, you have to speak up. But I didn't myself speak up until this point. So I was being a hypocrite. How can I tell my child When someone sexually harasses you, you have to tell someone you have to speak up and I'm not doing the same thing. So that is literally why I'm here today, to speak up for myself, start my healing process, like I said, and continue on with using my voice. There was attempts to intimidate silence me, I can't be silent. I, I absolutely cannot. Um, after listening to the recording, again, um, Joe wasn't just, Joe wasn't there. I listened to the recording with the, uh, some of the production staff members. Um, once again, everyone, you know, chuckles. So I'm like, well, I mean, if everybody's chuckling, just keep that in there. It wasn't until, uh, one of my castmates, Mandy, informs me that 
although the audio sounds funny, I looked uncomfortable. She looked over me and she saw that I was uncomfortable. Um, so she suggested that uh, we shouldn't keep those moments in the episode. And I agreed because I was uncomfortable. Um, so they were edited out. Um, I just wanted to speak my piece. Um, it was really, really hard to even get up to this point. Uh, sorry if I had to speak slow. Uh, sorry if I had to like stutter. And it, I just really had to take the time to really formulate what I was going to say and how I was going to say it because there's so many thoughts that go through my head about this whole scenario, about the situation, that it's, it, 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 it's, it's been hard to even get it out in front of this camera right now. Um, at this point in time, I just recommend any woman that thinks about working with this person in any capacity, please think again. Um, I should have walked into this situation uh, doing a little, a little bit, a bit more research on how work environments are with him. Um, I should have take heed to the accusations that have been in the past, even though they are more so in his personal life. Those should have been red flags for me as well. Um, but at the end of the day, regardless of all of that, no one should ever feel comfortable enough to speak the way that person spoke to me, ever. No one should ever feel comfortable enough to make a workplace environment completely hostile and toxic the way that person did. No one should ever feel like they can be sexually explicit and suggestive, not only to you, while you're coming in just trying to work, but also in front of the entire production staff to belittle you. It should never happen. After I left, well, at once I decided to quit, I informed my lawyer. My lawyer got on a phone call with his lawyer and informed his lawyer that these are the reasons why my client is leaving this network, which you will not be returning. Um, once my lawyer uh, informed his lawyer, I then informed my castmates via text to them that I am not guilt for the Joe Budden Network. Um, my apologies to them, but I prayed on it, I meditated on it, but it, this is just not the right fit for me. Um, no one responded in that moment, and I was removed from the group chat, but I did speak to both of them a week after. Uh, also, uh, after my departure, Joe then went on his podcast and uh, made this statement. Excuse me, hold on one second. <sighs> Joe made this statement podcast. No, but it's Karen. He's looking like a baddie. <laughs> Shit. HR, Joe. HR. <laughs> I need to be like Rose. <laughs> if Rose, would you ever hire any women? Nah, I'm gonna want to fuck the bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, 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 If I hire any women, I'm going to want to fuck them bitches, is what he said 
after my departure from the podcast. I'm saying this situation one time and one time only. I have to just do this to start my healing process because if I sit and let this fester inside of me any longer, I will not be good. Um, I don't even know what to say at this point. I, I pretty much said my piece. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna take a social media break after this because um, yeah, I uh, wish everybody love peace and that's it uh, but I'm gonna be doing what I need to do to move on from this situation and signing off <laughs>